Hello my friends, how are you doing today? Good to know, keep going and if your day by any kind of chance is not so positive then don't give up, it's gonna get better, I promise. Today I was checking my calendar, it's over there and I noticed that April is approaching which means that Easter is coming and here in Norway Easter is all about true crime and crime. Yeah, sounds weird, but actually Norwegians have this tradition called Påskekrim, which means they are pretty much obsessed with reading anything crime-related, watching documentaries and TV episodes and anything. I have actually a video about that, so if you haven't seen that, I will put the link below so you get the idea more specifically. And all of that, why I was saying, it just makes more sense for me to create more Norwegian true crime video related content. And today I actually found a case that reached its peak during Easter time in Oslo. And it also kind of reminded me of this uh, true crime that took place in the United States, the Unabomber, and there's actually a movie about it. So I think this could be like definitely called as a Unabomber of Oslo, but yeah, let's just start. And so let's hop into our time machines and go back to 1965 in Oslo. A man who was later referred to as Granatmannen, in translation it means grenade man, kept all the Oslo citizens in a complete fear. They called him Grenade Man just because they didn't know his real identity, his real name, and this identity is unknown up to nowadays. So basically, this is unsolved case. Granat Manen managed to keep Oslo citizens in fear and the feeling of unsafety for quite a period. It was from the February up to April 1965. So this grenade man or Granat Manen was putting basically grenades in different places of the city and these places where he was putting his grenades were basically grenade traps and nobody knew where will the next explosion occur and when it's gonna happen so this is why basically everyone was so terrified just imagine how would you feel like if you are about to go and do your daily things like grocery shopping or to work and you do not really know if you are going to return because unexpectedly you might just trip on one of these grenade traps and explode there were quite many of these explosions and places that were discovered with grenade traps and a quick message uh, as you all know i'm really enjoying making videos for you guys but you know i've reached the point where I have to choose between doing something else in order to survive, you know, money doesn't come from the sky for me as a rain. Um, so if you really want to support me, I really invite you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel and please spread the message with your friends who would be interested to subscribe to my channel and watch my content because I really need that in order to be monetized. Let's be honest, we all need money, especially nowadays when I notice like in the grocery shop, the prices are getting up. Thank God we have electric car because the gas price is also like, whoa. Okay, okay, I'm gonna shut up and let's move to Oslo in 1965. On February 4th, 1965, at around 7 a.m., the first explosion took place in Tunesway in one of Oslo's districts called Skoyen. So this grenade trap was discovered by a 19-year-old young man. His name was Lasse Birkeland. And at that moment, he was just rushing to school to Oslo Handel Gymnasium. As it was February, it was pretty much snowy. And I guess uh, they didn't manage to clean the roads and the paths, uh, walkways properly. And therefore, you know, the situations when there's a lot of snow and then people make this like narrow trail where everyone is going and there's snow like 
on both sides and you're just going through this narrow trail. And so Lasse was walking in this narrow uh, pathway uh, that was created by people. And then he noticed that there's some men like approaching in front of him. And being a polite young man, he decided just to hop into the snow so that the man who is approaching could get by him. And so he ends up at the snowy pile at the one side of this road and his feet are into this snow that is like in between two cars that were parked by this uh, walkway and then he feels like he touched something with his feet luckily he moved a few meters away after touching this something and the something was a wire and actually this decision to move a little bit away after touching this wire saved his life the grenade exploded and uh, the young man survived he just got some really minor injuries i guess they were from the uh, splinters or the gravel that just blew up from uh, this explosion and then there was a weird thing about this uh, lasse uh, he actually didn't turn back to see what just happened he just moved forward to go to school like nothing happened i also read that somewhere that people who were basically somewhere nearby this explosion were shouting back at him like are you okay uh aren't you in injured but he was just like moving forward and saying i'm okay i'm okay be careful out there like yeah be careful there might be explosives <laughs> so Lasse went to school as he would normally do as if there wasn't any explosion he survived and then uh, some of his schoolmates noticed that he's actually bleeding uh, on his back and you might ask why didn't he feel that there's some kind of injury on his back i don't know like i would explain this with some kind of shock or something you know because i think they say that once you're in a shock you do not really feel the pain or anything later in the interviews he explained that he felt a little pain but he felt like that was from the wave of the energy that came out from the explosion so he was he thought he was basically just hit and this is why uh, it hurts a little bit he didn't have an idea that there might be some kind of uh, splinters from the explosion stuck into his back i don't know and he also said that he was wearing a really thick coat because it was winter and, and it was cold and actually this thick coat might have saved him like yeah that could make sense and so he goes to the school's emergency room he gets some bandages on his injuries and afterwards in his interviews he said that the only thing that uh, was left after this explosion uh, related to his health was just a little scar on his back so he was safe after visiting the emergency room he was called out to his school director's office and there he was uh, greeted by two policemen who obviously wanted to know a little bit more about this explosion and what had happened the same day only in the evening there was another explosion it happened in Koletsgate and Uelandsgate in Ildalen a grenade trap was hidden in some bushes with a trigger attached again in a parked car. This place was around 4 kilometers away from the place where the explosion struck Lasse a little bit earlier that day. This time there was also a victim. It was a 25-year-old man who was just going home after work. Suddenly there was this explosion that also hit him in the back. He wasn't so lucky as Lasse because he was hit in the back of his head with some kind of splinters from this explosion. Luckily this man survived this explosion so nothing wrong happened to him uh, however we do not have so much information about who was this man and how he is doing right now but I still assume that he might have had quite a psychological damage after this 18 days passed uh, since those two explosions and on the February 22nd Granatmanen was back again this time the trap was set by Svalbardvejen in a residential area on Vinderen a wire attached to a grenade was attached to a garden gate this time the grenade was noticed by a woman who was just uh, waking up in the morning and going out and about to fetch her morning newspaper thank god she didn't activate the grenade uh, when she noticed this wire she immediately called the police and this is not only good news for this lady who survived and didn't explode thank god 
but also good news for the police because now they were able to kind of investigate and research the explosive and think how it was uh, put on this place, you know, like have some kind of information about how this granat manen is working. And now, fast forward, let's move to March the 5th of the same year. Two teenage boys of the age of 15 and 16 were chasing a Samoyed breed dog on the streets. The owner had asked both boys to look after the dog because it was a female dog and he specifically said to look after that dog so that this dog doesn't mate with other dogs. You know, both boys were on a mission. The dog did not have any leash, therefore the boys were literally running after the dog and the dog was determined to escape from them. While chasing the dog, they reached the walkway between Gladsvei and Kapelvei and on Grefsen. There they saw a man wearing a hat and a long coat. He was ascending a steep hill and about to enter this walkway. One of the boys actually stopped uh, and asked this man, what time is it? But this man was simply ignoring. He turned his head and just walked away. Boys said that it actually felt quite weird, but anyways. Who could stop boys like this, especially on this serious mission? So they just continued to run on the walkway. And then in one moment they stumbled upon a wire. The grenade exploded immediately. But just like Lasse, both of the boys were really, really lucky because they fell on the ground and all the things that were flying around from the explosion simply flew over their heads. But imagine if it didn't happen like this. Crazy. Both boys were simply knocked on the ground from the power of the explosion and it was said that around 150 meters away in an apartment uh, a ceiling lamp was falling uh, on the floor just because this was so strong. And so this means that the boys actually uh, got through this without any injuries, but I'm pretty sure they got quite a serious mental trauma after this. You know, they were just teenagers and experiencing something like this. Uh, one of the boys afterwards said that the wire was set a little bit higher than the boy's knees, uh, which means that if it was a little bit lower, then the dog who was running in front of them would have activated the explosion and the boys who were following the dog would have just run straight into the explosion and I think they wouldn't survive that. And yes, you might be wondering if the dog survived. Yes, of course, he survived because he was literally running under the wire and after the explosion he just ran away and he wasn't injured. And so, remember? Those boys met this mysterious man in the long coat and in the hat before this explosion took place. And so the police were uh, interrogating the boys to get some kind of information about this man because this might be the suspect. And they obviously couldn't say anything in details, but I, they said that they believe that he might be in his 30s or 40s. He was around 180 centimeters tall. The last attempt to blow something up happened on the April the 1st. Two street sweepers discovered hand grenades wrapped in a newspaper between Fridjof Nansen's Road and the Colosseum Cinema. The trap wasn't deployed and the grenade did not went off. And uh, people assumed that this might have happened because Granat Manen was actually disturbed during uh, making uh, this grenade trap and he just simply ran away and left everything as it is. After the second incident in early February 1965, it became clear that it was not an isolated case. This became the largest police investigation in Norway after World War II. Needless to say that the police was quite worried about this thing happening in Oslo and as I read somewhere that policemen were called in uh, from their Easter holidays in order to help because they needed as many hands as possible to solve this terrible, terrible thing happening in the city. This was really crazy because they knew that this exploding thing is spreading like a fire throughout the city and there was a high chance that it's not gonna stop until they're gonna catch this man. The biggest fear of the policeman uh, definitely was that 
this granat nannen is actually saving the best for the 17th of May, which is a big, big holiday, big celebration in Norway when people are going out in the streets in parades and celebrating. And they were really afraid that there's going to be a big explosion during these festivities. And yeah, 17th of May is the day of constitution in Norway and it's a big deal here. But then a weird thing happened. After this fifth attempt, which was believed like a disturbed attempt, this granat mannen actually stopped. There weren't any like uh, calls about finding grenade traps. Uh, there weren't any explosions in the city at all. He just stopped. However, there was this one case uh, when people found an intact grenade in one of the Oslo's regions and it was traced back to some kind of weapon shop robbery, but they couldn't find any suspects. So this case went cold and led nowhere. And we still don't know if it's actually related to Granatmanen. But then actually it was revealed that there was at least one suspect uh, being a Granatmanen and this man was actually a policeman. And this man, this policeman who was suspected actually uh, did a suicide in 1996. The policeman was searching his apartment and they actually found some explosives and also wires. But as it appears, the fact about these explosives and wires was not mentioned in the report. And not knowing all of that, the case was like officially going unsolved and it just stopped like that. Was the granat man and this policeman, did he left this world because he felt so guilty about things that he did? We don't know and we cannot answer all of these questions. And now let's just discuss and look into some of the theories regarding granat mannen. One of the first things that just pops out and I think is quite logic is that this person who is doing this actually should have had some kind of military experience because obviously the person needs to know something about uh, explosives, about how to set them, how to make these traps. So he might have had some kind of military training. It's not like a normal citizen person just, I don't know, one day decides, oh, I'm gonna make a grenade trap. It's not so easy, actually. There are several versions why this person was actually doing this. One of them was like, maybe he was in the war and maybe he was now really, really irritated and unsatisfied about how the government in Norway was working at that moment. And the second thing was maybe he was in a war, but he was really traumatized uh, psychologically and this trauma this psychological trauma led him to do these things and i also just got an idea maybe he was just a person who was working in some facilities that were related to explosives or guns or something like that i mean he must have been in this environment that is related to all of these military things how do you think and so let's start with Lasse. So as I said, he had this weird reaction after this uh, first explosive, like nothing happened. But afterwards he revealed that during his life, this actually did influence him quite a lot. Like after this explosive, he was walking really slowly in the streets of Oslo, like afraid not to trip over some kind of wire and not get into an explosion again. And he also said that he was worried that he wasn't just a, like random uh, victim, that he was actually a target and therefore afterwards he was afraid that this man is gonna come after him. And when he was going home, he usually locked his door and then counted to 10 because he thought like if he counts to 10 and nothing explodes, he's safe. So you can see that he had like a mental trauma. And then afterwards he decided to enroll the military and when he had this training with grenades and explosives he got really freaked out but then he had to like throw an explosive during the training by himself and then he really experienced uh, another explosion and it was like a trigger that helped him to overcome his fear and afterwards he said that he wasn't afraid anymore like i think you he overcame his fear with this like a shock therapy i don't know but yeah 
you can see that he was actually struggling after surviving this explosion. And I also found some uh, interviews from these both boys that were the victims of the fourth explosion. Remember the ones who were chasing the dog? Uh, both of them said that they really, really struggled after this explosion and there wasn't anyone they could just talk to and explain how they are feeling, uh, how hard it is, uh, what an emotional trauma they're experiencing. And also they said that they felt quite a pressure from the society and police and people in general because everyone believed that they actually saw this Granat man and remember the man in the coat and in the hat and everyone was expecting from them to recognize this man somewhere and just solve the case. And so it was quite devastating for both of these teenage boys. And this actually really makes me so sad. But again, remember, this happened in 1965. And I guess in those times, people weren't so much thinking about uh, psychological help and uh, trauma support. And there is actually an indie film made by one Norwegian director, Karianne Berge. It is also called Granatmannen. It has its vibe of Oslo in 1965, because the director used a lot of real photos and materials of that time. Also, there are interviews with the survivors. Although this case got a really huge media coverage uh, in 1965 and afterwards, this case, up to nowadays, remains unsolved. We don't know who was this man, why he was choosing exactly those places for his traps, who was the main target of all of this. We do not know anything about it. And this just freaks me out, because why did he stop? There must be some kind of reason behind this. And this just makes you crazy, you know, you want to know. And yeah, I guess I am more let's say, triggered about the fact that he stopped and we didn't know why. So something might have made him change his mind. I don't know, like, so many questions. And if we draw parallels to this famous uh, true crime case from the United States with Una Bamber, that guy was actually giving out the message why he was doing it. But here, we don't know anything about the person. What made him do this? What was the reason? And again, let's talk about this policeman who was the suspect and who later on took his life. Uh, I mean, how do you think? Was he guilty or not? Because I'm like 50-50. Like 50% 50 yes, he felt quite guilty and therefore he ended his life. And uh, the police maybe who noticed all of these explosives and wires in his room maybe thought that that's going to be very shameful for them and therefore they were hiding this fact. But another 50% I'm thinking like, no, he wasn't guilty. Because if the police found all of these explosives and wires in his room, I think it would be into their interest to inform the society that they have solved this case and that everything has ended and they do not have to live in fear. So it also makes sense. So I don't know, like, this is a place for you to write down in comments what are you actually thinking about all of this. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you love the story about Granatmanen. Uh, the story, not the fact that it really happened. Just a reminder to stay safe and do not risk your lives. But you know what it is. It's shout out time. And my first shout out goes to the person who commented my video where I was hiking on Fanafiel. So he said that here's why Norway is one of the best countries for hiking. Scenes like this simply cannot be seen every day. Fantastic upload. Erwin's Lens, thank you very much. Uh, it was easy to make this video, thanks to Norwegian nature. I hope you're gonna love also other videos on my channel and subscribe to it. Have a nice day. The second shout out goes to another person who subscribed to my channel and commented one of my previous videos. One was made during my birthday when I was climbing Floyen. And I'm happy that you discovered my channel. I'm happy that you are watching my videos and enjoying them. Thank you very much for that. And I hope that your visit to Norway, uh, specifically Bergen, is gonna be a really great one. No, I'm actually sure about that. <laughs> I guess that's it for today. Thank you for being together with me during these minutes. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. 
subscribe if you haven't subscribed, uh, comment, like, do whatever, just to make me motivated to continue. <laughs> that being said, enjoy your day and see you next time.